This is the last section that you will do in your APA style paper and the appendix uh, includes several different parts to it. So you can see here that appendix A is the informed consent. You're going to have multiple appendices and you're going to give them um, names at the top. So it'll be appendix A through however many you have. So A, B, C, D. You want to put them in order that matches with the way you talked about them in your method section. So you can refer back to this is um, sample four, student sample four. You can refer back to the method section and see how this is written out. Um, but this appendix A is, is typically going to be the informed consent. It's double spaced, just like the rest of the paper. And it includes the response options here. Next, appendix B. Yours is going to be different than this one. You'll probably go into demographics. Um, again, it's going to be in your design and procedure, you'll talk about what participants did, and then each of those steps will be matched with an appendix, and you will present your appendix in that order. So this is a good example of demographics. You can see that there's a numbered question and then the response options. And then you'll likely have um, something with liquor type scales, a questionnaire with liquor type scales. The student used sexual harassment scenarios. So a um, little different than what most of you have, but you can see the liquor type scale is there. And they have a description that they used in Qualtrics and then the actual questions. And then you have your debrief. And at the end, you're gonna have your figure. So you'll learn how to make a figure in lab, uh, but you're going to include one graph. So this uh, is an example of what an appendix, a good appendix looks like. I'm going to show you now how to work on your, um, how to work on your appendix from Qualtrics. So you may have already downloaded your Qualtrics or you're going to do that in lab. Uh, but you're going to download the survey and then I'll show you how to edit it, format it in Google Doc. Here I am in my Mother of Turtles sample. I'm going to go to Tools and I'm going to export my survey to Word. When I do that and say export, it's going to provide a Word document. And you can pull that into your drive. So again, you're going to put this in your shared group folder so that you can all access it and all make edits and have the same version. Um, sometimes when you drag this format into Google Drive, for some reason it doesn't open properly. So if you encounter that, you can always click into the Word document and then copy and paste. Um, I think a lot of you might end up doing that. And so that's what I did here. You'll notice that this formatting does not look at all like what we want to do for our um, what we want to do for our our appendix. So I'm going to show you some quick trips for tips for this. Pardon my inability to speak as I make this recording. So um, a good thing to do is to plan out what you need to include. So we're going to have appendix A, and we're going to do the informed consent. And I'm going to look at my informed consent language. We can just drag that up here. So here, I need to um, do some editing with the formatting, but I'm gonna do that at the end. I'm just gonna arrange this first. So here, I'm gonna delete my mother of turtle sample. I don't need this start block one. I don't need this information. Um, I could keep this where I have these little bubbles. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with leaving them as bubbles if that's if that's your preference. Uh, you can also remove them. I'm going to remove them. And you don't need the numbers here. So what this what the numbers refer to uh, are the the numbers that you're going to show uh, that you're going to see when you download your data. And so for for the consent, you don't need those numbers there. Now, once you um, finish your Appendix A, or informed consent, if you press Command Enter if you're on a Mac, or if you press Control Enter on a non-Mac, it'll start a new page for you. And that's where we want to put Appendix B. 
Now, I want to note, um, I know a lot of students uh, don't use that little trick. The reason why it's so beneficial is that if you add more lines here, you're still going to have just this new page. It's not going to mess that up. So um, definitely something I would recommend using moving forward. Now, I want to do my Appendix B. And we're going to say, and I'm going to delete this skip logic. I don't need that. We're going to say the demographics um, are going to be my Appendix B. So demographic questions. And you might not have put demographic questions as your block name, so you might need to type it out, but that's totally, totally easy to do. Um, I can see here that there's some weird formatting. So this is a table format. Uh, so I'm just going to delete that, make my life a little easier. And then I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete this. And yeah, and I'm going to do formatting at the end. But I basically want to set this up so that this all can just be lined up and then we can do all of our editing at one time. And you can see there's a lot of weird spacing going on. So this will be a good, good example for you. And I'm going to put text entry wherever there were open spots. So how old are you is a text entry response. And I'm gonna continue to do this for my questions. And there's a lot of information that you don't need here. So I'm gonna delete my end block information. Um, so here I'm going to use my command enter. And I want to, you can see there's all sorts of funky spacing here, right? So I have extra spaces that I'm gonna get rid of. Lots of attention to detail on this that you need to do. And let's delete all of that. Before I move any forward, um, move forward with this, one thing that you can do, so I'm gonna control all and go to format. I'm gonna clear formatting. So that's gonna get rid of the additional spacing that I had. Um, and it also allows me to see if I have, um, if I have extra spaces in here, like I have extra spaces here and that's fine. I, it doesn't really matter, but eventually we're gonna double space all of this. So um, as an example, let me go ahead and, and format this. So I want this to be bold and I want this to be centered. So I'm gonna use the alignment rather than tabbing and center. And my informed consent should be bold as well. And I'm going to use some little bubbles here. So I can choose from my checklist menu. Um, I can go ahead and, and do uh, options like that if I want to. Um, I could have them be boxes. I think I'm gonna use little check boxes. Um, and so this would work for the informed consent. My last step would be to put this as double space, but I'm gonna do that at the end when everything's done. So for this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to center this and bold. I'm gonna make my demographic questions bold. And then for these, I'm gonna add some um, numbers. And this one is gender. So I'm gonna highlight all of these gender options and indent, and I'll actually make those, oops, I'll actually make those a different, let's see, let's restart the brain. Yeah, let's leave it as A, B. Um, I'm gonna leave these as A through E. It doesn't really make a big difference. It's most straightforward, easiest for you as you're formatting. Uh, and then what school do you attend? Same thing, I need to include to, I'm just um, highlighting this in tabbing. So I highlighted all of them in tab over. So this would be the appendix B. And again, I'm gonna just do my double spacing at the end for everything. So the next part, you are going to have um, 
a lot of you were going to have this option where uh, you had a stimuli like um, or multiple stimuli rather so you might have had uh, two videos that you showed um, or maybe you had uh, two music um, two songs that you had people listen to so if you had something that you were using to um, something that, that is media that you were using to try and elicit a response, um, you're going to need to include that in here as well. So we're on Appendix C. So I'm going to say Appendix C. And I'm going to call this um, meditation videos because that matches my study. And you can see that there is a note here. Please watch the following one minute meditation video when you're done. Ooh, look at that, bear bad grammar. Move on to the next section. So then um, I would put my actual video link here. So I would copy in, I'm not gonna do it, but I would copy in my link here. And then I would have, um, link for video one, which is the, what did I call it? I think I called it the focused, focused meditation video and a neutral meditation video. So I would put my video one, um, we'll just say focused meditation video. And then I would have my neutral meditation video and then my link here you could have a screenshot of it um, if you have photos or pictures that you're using you would put those in there we just want to make sure you include the instructions and then the information here so now i can delete that i'm going to delete this and this is my next section so this was our um these are the two videos that I used. And then now, and all of you are gonna have something like this. I'm gonna do my appendix B. This is gonna be my self-esteem survey. Um, and this is the Rosenberg. So I wanna use the full name, self-esteem survey. And it's the RSES. And then I'm actually going to cite the authors, and I can't remember offhand the year, so I'm just going to put this in here. Um, so what you want to do is first you need your instructions. So again, all of you are going to have this that you need to do. So you want to make sure, again, have your instructions. So this is exactly what we gave them. And then um, I want to put my response options at the top here. Response options. And you can do this a lot of different ways. I'm just going to put it like this where I say, I'm going to move this actually. I'll cheat and steal this. Not really cheating. Say strongly agree. And you don't need the numbers in here um, necessarily. I'm going to leave them because they make sense here. And I'm just going to list them. And there we go. I have extra spaces in here, but I'm not going to worry about those. I am going to worry about them because I can't help myself. All right. So now we have our response options. And then what we want to do is we want to have our questions only. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to delete everything except for the questions because. I have the response options at the top. So I don't need to have them repeated here multiple times. It just takes up space. Now, if you did that, it wouldn't technically be wrong. It just is a lot more work for you to do it that way. It takes up a lot more room. Um, so again, I'm just going through and deleting this. And this is my last one here. So I'll just go ahead and move that to next page. So on the whole, I am satisfied with myself. We've got all of our options here. Um, at times, I think I'm no good at all. So as you will notice, this is some reverse scoring. 
So you want to actually indicate that in your appendix if you have reverse scoring. So on the whole, I am satisfied with myself. If they strongly agree with that, that indicates high self-esteem, right? Um, whereas at times I think I'm no good, good at all. If that's strongly agree, that's low self-esteem. So we need to put an R there and it's gonna automatically try and make it a copyright sign. Um, but we want to do this for any question that's reverse scored. Uh, so I'm gonna go through and add my reverse scoring where appropriate. So I'm just doing my R. And then I want to put a note about what that is. So I can say R refers to reverse scoring, reverse scored items. Um, you could also do asterisks and then say that the asterisk refers to reverse sport items, whatever you'd like to do there. So that would be how we do our questionnaires. And then the last one that I have here is the debrief. So that's a straightforward one. I need to make this my appendix E. And again, I'm going to center this and delete. And that should be the end of it until you add your graph. So you could add a placeholder here and say appendix F. And this is going to be figure one. You're all going to have at least one figure. If you have more than that, you would need to have figure one, figure two, et cetera. So I'm just gonna put a placeholder here. So appendix F centered, and then this is gonna be bold. And my last step is that everything needs to be, so I'm doing control um, A or command A, um, highlighting everything. Everything needs to be double spaced. And I want it to be the same text as whatever I'm using in my paper. So that you might need to modify if your group is using different text. Uh, I'm gonna change it to the standard for APA, which is Times New Roman. So there you have what an appendix should look like and how you would format that. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know or talk to your TA.